wanting help or advice from other people, having enough money to live so that you do not have to depend on other people. And there is also a, defini uh, a last definition, existing separately and not connected with or influenced by others. So my question is, uh, is it at all possible to be independent? Uh, and uh, today I would argue that in independence and being independent is a kind of fantasy or a dream or a, a, an illusion. And um, you can, uh, uh, you can uh, lead your argument uh, in very different, using very different examples. But today, for the sake of time, I decided just to concentrate solely on the human being, subject, human person, uh, with no relation to the country or organization. So that's one thing. And uh, another thing is that I will use two examples. Psychic life and body to, to prove, to show you that in, uh, independence uh, in a very strict terms, it is, is not possible. Um, so, um, when we think about history of philosophy from the ancient times, um, we may find out that a human being was always dependent on something. Um, um, on broader order. It might be the reason, like the reason with the capital R, it might be God or gods, it might be natural world or society and other people. So to my mind, when, I, when I'm reading history of philosophy from the ancient time, from the ancient time one of the most important uh, category when we are talking about human being and human subject is the category of encounter, of relation, relationality. Um, because in a way, this is what makes us human beings. In a way, what makes uh, human beings is what we are not. So, in a way, we are made by the contact with the other, with something that it's not ours to begin with. And I will illustrate it with two examples. Uh, the first one is, as I already mentioned, is a psychic life. So this is a very popular image of our psychic life when we deal with uh, psychoanalysis and conscious and, and unconscious parts, iceberg. And as Sigmund Freud, uh, um, Austrian philosopher, father of psychoanalysis and doctor, proved is that uh, the conscious part of our self is only the top of the iceberg. Uh, but the rest, the major part, is uh, we, are, we are unaware of it. This is our unconscious. This is what, uh, what we do not know about ourselves, but it still is forming ourselves. So how does it influence our concept of the self, of the subject, of the human being? So I, I would suggest that there are three important lessons for us to um, uh, to learn from psychoanalysis and this co concept of the subject. First, that um, in uh, social relations, when we throw accusation on somebody or when, when we uh, say or claim that someone is uh, the reason why we feel guilt or fear or uh, disgust or disrespect, uh, Freud would suggest that we should concentrate not on the other, as a reason for our disrespect, disregard, uh, disgust, fear, etc., etc., but on ourselves instead. That our reaction, reactions to others say more about ourselves than the others. So this is, we may say, the first lesson. The second one is that uh, maybe we should uh, be a little bit more humble in terms of knowing oneself, uh, because as this uh, image shows us, we do not know ourselves. We are not 100% sure uh, that, uh, about our motives, about our dreams. Uh, we may um, be struck by our deep dreams or uh, hopes uh, or wishes. 
And the third point is that, in a way, we are formed by human culture. We are not uh, independent from uh, something that is much great, greater from us. Uh, tradition, um, the, the history of our ancestors, but more broadly uh, of uh, humankind. We may also think about the situation when one is uh, when, uh, about pregnancy as a situation where um, the child inside uh, or the fetus inside, even if, if it wasn't born at all, uh, is uh, has um, is projected with dreams, hopes, histories of their parents. So it is not an entirely independent at all, because it is dependent on um, some visions, images, dreams, hopes, uh, fears, history that is uh, inscribed in <coughs> the fetus or the child before it is even born. And this is no longer only a, let's say, projection of psychology, but it is confirmed by scientific data, by genetics, for example, um, quite recent studies on uh, epigenetics shows that we are inheriting and not only uh, physical behaviors or, I don't know, looks, but also we may inherit uh, trauma, uh, certain behavior to, um, to stress, discrimination, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. This is in a way inscribed in in uh, our bodies. And um, epigenetics uh, is the research on uh, how is genome translated into phenotype and how environment or context shapes it and uh, what and how we inherit in genes. Um, so we might inherit also our parents, grandparents, parents, behaviors or attitudes towards stigma on, on how, so this is how uh, post-traumatic stress disorder is partly uh, possible to be inherited, right? So uh, this is also something to think about in terms of philosophy. Can we uh, imagine a human being that is tabula rasa, that, that is a blank page, only to be, um, only to be uh, written after we are born? Or are we indeed whole libraries already inscribed, already um, in a way um, uh, written? And another example, so this was second life, and another example is the body. Uh, this, is an, in, in, this is a very com complex issue, the body. Uh, but if we ask ourselves, what is my, my body? Uh, what is my in my body? Uh, we might have, uh, again, doubts about being in independent, or at least rethink independency. Uh, because on the one hand, the body seems very solid and autonomous, right? I, I have no um, doubts about being distant to your bodies in a way, but also your bodies, your attention influence my, the way I sit here, uh, influence us, right? Our attitudes towards, uh, towards each other. Um, so if we think, for example, about touching, uh, it is also a very uh, strange experience. Uh, for example, with the table, I, I wish to touch it, but when I'm touching it, when I'm concentrating on the feeling of touch, I'm not sure what is touching and what is being touched. I mean, is the table touching me or am I touching the table? Maybe it would be easier to imagine like two hands uh, touching each other. It is difficult because they are simultaneously touching and being touched, and you cannot tell which is touching. Uh, so this is one uh, strange thing about the body, that it is, in a way, intermingled uh, with the world, and is affected and is affecting the world. But another thing about the body is uh, evolution why I am shaped in this way or the other. Uh, 
the concept of evolution shows us, among other things, that we are uh, intermingled or interrelated, entangled with the worlds that are much broader than our human world. Uh, and evolution is stressing our connections with other life forms. Uh, one of the biologists that dealt with the concept of evolution told that uh, evolution is not about units, it's not about individual um, species, individuals, it's about relations, at least pairs, at least two. Uh, just think, for example, of a wing, a wing, wing, sorry, wing. It's, it has no sense without the wind and the air. Think about fin, fish fin. It has no sense without water. So to understand fin and fish, you need to well, think about simultaneously. Think about spider, spider web, and, uh, and fly. Uh, it is impossible also to think about, uh, to not to think about those uh, species together. Um, for example, uh, in spider web, the gaps between the, the gaps between web is a, just a little bit uh, less than the length of the fly, so the fly could be caught inside. Um, so, in a way, spider, uh, sorry, <coughs> spider needs to be a bit fly-like, right, to understand what kind of uh, pre prey can can it uh, can it. Uh, caught in the web. So this also reveals the world of interconnections and interdependence. Uh, there are more examples of this. Uh, there is human genome, which is in slight part only human. Uh, there is also this fact that uh, human bodies are made of uh, less uh, qual quantity of human cells than human, that non-human cells. So, this is all to provoke you to think, to challenge the very notion of independence and try to think how we can be independent given this world of um, uh, rich world, complex world of being uh, independent. For example, how can I think about being independent when bacteria in my intestines influence not only the way uh, I digest, but also my mood and my thinking, and uh, the way I behave. Uh, what would purity mean in this context? Uh, purity of race, purity of species, uh, purity of nation, na nas nationality. So I will, uh, with this, I will, I will conclude uh, that. Um, to my mind, it is important to challenge independence to reveal uh, interrelations of the world and the world that we are dependent on and not always treat them just or uh, in a way they deserved. Uh, I think this is important today in terms of uh, troubling times uh, of economic and environmental crises uh, because uh, with interdependence instead of independence, we might think about solidarity, maybe, differently. And uh, do I have time for a five minute yes. 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 I just want to show you um, a film that, a short commercial. Uh, I, think, I think some of you already, I showed it during classes. Uh, but I think this film illustrates pretty well what I had in mind in terms of uh, solidarity. So just have a look. Yeah. 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 Yeah.